Hello everyone. My name is Vinod Murlidhar. I'm a product leader here at HashiCorp for the Vault product. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of a talk and an update on what we've been doing here in the Vault team over the last few months, as well as give you a peek into the future and, and what we're going to do over the next few months as well. Before that, welcome to HashiConf 2022. And we hope that we, you have a, a wonderful time listening to the different talks that we have here. I wanted to start with uh, a rather grim picture and a statistic. What you're seeing on the screen here talks about the annual cost of cybercrime that's expected by the year 2025. This is a huge amount. And if you think about it, this is a top of mind for a lot of our uh, CEOs and, and business leaders who think of cybersecurity as one of the top challenges for their organizations. And kind of in the last 10 years, um, this is, we have seen uh, 20 odd companies that have exp experienced massive breaches, right, in the, in the tune of $1 million or above. And one thing we know for certain is that 95% of those companies now use Vault. And so why is this important, right? And securing a data center in the past was, um, I wouldn't call it easy, but it was certainly simpler because your infrastructure was walled inside a single environment. And this is easier to manage kind of all your infrastructure within the four walls of your firewall has been simpler to, to manage. However, what happens when all of your apps and infrastructure are beyond a single data center, beyond the walled infrastructure of your data center, where your infrastructure is now on clouds, on premises, and a combination of those. And that's the reality today. Kind of all application deployments and developments have been in a hybrid multi-cloud model. The largest of large enterprises now are on multiple cloud providers, have their own on-prem infrastructure, and this makes it very, very challenging to secure that infrastructure. And another result of kind of this infrastructure being spread apart is now these applications that are on these different infrastructures need to talk to each other. And that's where kind of your authentication, authorization all comes into the picture and the need for either username, passwords, API keys, and what we refer to as secrets comes in. And this becomes a, a big problem, right? What happens when these secrets land up where they shouldn't? Uh, and very often you see on the screen here, um, when users are trying to put passwords, they're putting it in different places, but what happens when code is um, requiring these credentials is that they, they put it up in config files, they put it up in source code, and that becomes a problem. And that's where uh, Vault comes in. Vault is a secrets management solution that builds up on your existing infrastructure. So what you're going to see here is um, Vault uses your existing authentication infrastructure, whether you use your Active Directories or Octas, whatever the, the case be, uses that infrastructure to build kind of a system of consolidation of all your secrets where we authorize only kind of the users and applications that have access to these um, systems. Yeah, Vault helps protect these secrets um, and by storing them in a, in a very secure fashion and allowing access to your developers via APIs and other simple methods. And so Vault was launched in the year 2015. And since then, we've seen Vault be adopted across the board in many different environments. These are some statistics from um, Vault and its adoption over the last year. You can see that our Vault and Kubernetes binary was downloaded a record 8.8 .8 million times. And in the same case, our Vault open source binary was downloaded over 130 million times in the last year. What it goes to show is that our customers and practitioners are not only adopting or starting to use Vault, but they're starting to use it in scale. And you can see that there were trillions of secrets served kind of over the years and large enterprises. And we're talking about the, the top 20 US banks here, which have the most mission critical applications. 
over 70% of them currently use Vault for their mission critical secrets management needs. And over the time, Vault again, in 2015, when we started off, we were an open source product. Since then, we've evolved. We now have a commercial version of Vault called the Vault Enterprise. And we have grown and matured along with our customers, right? And our customers, as their needs increase in governance and policy, in complexity around multiple data centers and scales, Vault has also built capabilities and functionality to help our customers with those environments. And we've continued to scale in, in uh, our architecture and our performance as these customers extend Vault beyond its own limits. But what if you want to do all of this without having to manage Vault? And that's where our HCP Vault platform comes in. HCP Vault was launched last year um, to allow our practitioners and operators to have all the power of Vault without any of the operational overhead. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, kind of what the, the uh, innovations that we've done in HCP Vault since we launched. But before that, kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about, now I say that Vault is widely adopted across the board. I, I talked to you about the number of downloads and, and the practitioners who've started adopting it but it's also being deeply integrated into large customer environments at scale. And we talked about these large banks, but th those are not the only ones. Vault is now being used across the board in um, uh, multiple different verticals and customers have started to use it at scale. So when we build a roadmap, when our product team is building a roadmap, um, there are certain themes that we kind of take as our priority and build the roadmap according to that. So I'll be walking you through some of that today. It always starts with um, our bread and butter workflow, the secrets management workflow, right? And the reason Vault is adopted by all of these folks, one of the main reasons why Vault is adopted by all of these folks is that we're a very secure product. And in the last year, kind of, I wanted to kind of share a little bit more about our security practices. Vault is known as best in class in security. Uh, it was even quoted as best in class as a secrets management solution by Gartner in the year 2020 as part of their PAM report. But now I'm happy to announce that Vault has um, FIPS 140-2 compliant certification. All right, what does this mean? We have a new binary, a Vault FIPS binary that is FIPS compliant and is certified by NIST. And uh, this can be used in environments where there is a highly um, regulatory or uh, compliance needs that, that requires uh, a more compliant version or a secure version of Vault. And that's not all. We are continuing on this path and working on FIPS 140-3 as our next goal and target here. Our next big theme here is developer experience. And as I had kind of mentioned earlier, Vault is primarily successful because our um, end practitioners being developers have adopted this product at scale. And so continuing down the path of making it simple, easy to both evaluate, adopt, but also onboard applications and application developers onto Vault in different environments is a major goal for us. And so as part of that, we have worked on Hello Vault reference apps in multiple languages that helps somebody who's just starting out with Vault to build out a proof of concept. Uh, we've also worked on capabilities that allow for us to um, build out uh, the, the update, the Go client library with login support, and also kind of building out additional quick start with setup examples with in Go, Ruby, C Sharp, Python, and Java. Uh, these are these are some of the the few innovations that have come out in the last few months and we're continuing that with additional innovation uh, by by updating our client libraries with OP, uh, open api based uh, vault client libraries that allow us to innovate faster and provide more frequent updates to our uh, client libraries in addition we're also helping build kv helper methods for api packages one thing I wanted to kind of call out here as I continue to talk through um, some of these, these roadmaps is 
this is only a small snippet and subset of the things that we're either have delivered or will deliver in the future. And so you'll see that kind of go check out our release pages, our blogs, you'll see a lot more information on some of these things. So I only picked up snippets because this is going to be a really short talk. And kind of one of the other important things for Walt, uh, we announced last year that we had 100 integrations. And our core philosophy as we think about Walt's integrations and its ecosystem is that it has to work in any environment that our customer is in, be it on-prem, cloud, or a mixed hybrid environment. And kind of on li in lines with that, we've continued to innovate, making kind of our customers who are um, having on-prem infrastructure, some of the legacy infrastructure in some, some cases, continue to make that be more secure. So as part of that, we delivered transparent data encryption for uh, Microsoft SQL. And there's, as you can see on the screen here, uh, innovations in, in building kind of our secrets engine for Oracle and Postgres and building web UIs for that, as well as IBM DB2 credential management is now possible through Vault. And we continue to kind of, while one foot of ours is on the on-prem environments, we are also continuing to build our um, expertise and our integration with our cloud environments. So you'll see again, uh, key management for Google Cloud, working on our uh, Snowflake key pair based authentication. Those are all kind of things that we're doing in the cloud. Again, not an extensive list, but there's, there's more to go there. In addition to kind of just working on on-prem and cloud, we're continuing to build Walt's use case as an OIDC provider that allows for uh, other applications to offload their identity uh, kind of management to Walt itself. And Walt can act as an OIDC provider for these applications that do not have their own auth provider. Uh, and this is a use case that we've already seen uh, one of our internal products, Boundary, start to use, and we hope that other applications in the future continue to use that as well. We're also making a lot of progress and we've done this investment over the last two years, our investment into Kubernetes. And so uh, Kubernetes Dynamic Secrets Engine allows for kind of just-in-time credentials to be created for um, Kubernetes service accounts, allowing, again, operators to be able to create accounts on the fly for deploying their applications. And in future, there's a lot more coming in all of these three buckets. There's going to be the on-prem uh, improvements. You see the transparent data encryption for Oracle, the cloud ones with support for Redis and other improvements in our ecosystem by continuing to work on the overall plugin infrastructure and the workflow improvements and more to go as well. The next big bucket is what we call the adjacent use cases. What, what this really is, is about consolidating more and more use cases on Vault so that it provides a better return on investment uh, when you are investing in Vault. And as part of that is our PKI, key management, all of these different workflows. And particularly with respect to our PKI, there are cases where customers with particularly conservative risk profiles, again, regulatory authorities and other things, must have all of their key material be created and stored within uh, hardware security modules or HSMs. And in, in the past, those are, those are very expensive pieces of equipment and, and usually motivated by kind of security or compliance needs. What Vault now offers is the ability for developers to make no change, continue to call Vault APIs for your API, for your PKI operations, but now Vault will offload those PKI operations to HSMs for purposes of key generation and certificate signing, et cetera. And what's, we already support um, offloading of these PKI operations to uh, cloud KMSs like the AWS KMS and in past releases. And in the future, Vault will be able to act as a PKCS 11 provider, providing for a lot of that uh, capabilities in-house itself. A, a couple more themes here before I close out. Um, I've talked about how large enterprises have adopted Vault at scale. What does this mean for us, right? We need to be able to provide high uptime in terms of reliability, resiliency, performance, and administration of Vault as it continues to scale. And an operator who's running and operating Vault cares about multiple things, a few of them in, including 
being able to set up Vault with ease, being able to monitor and manage Vault um, efficiently and effectively. And I'm proud to announce that kind of integrated storage, which is Vault's own internal storage, um, was launched a couple of years ago, is the primary storage now. We continue to offer kind of support for our console backend storage, but most new customers are now adopting integrated storage and we continue to innovate and improve on that. And um, another important aspect of uh, running a vault is being able to monitor it, continuing to be able to look at both usage metrics to understand how vault is being used, but also when something like a vault agent is deployed, being able to understand the health of those uh, vault agents. And so again, Vault Agent Telemetry has now been added to Vault's telemetry. And this uh, happens to be a community PR or a community uh, contribution to our code, which have, we have accepted. And, and we would love to thank our community at this point for not just this, but a lot of the other kind of innovations that they have done in, in the last year as well. And then lastly, kind of the management itself, uh, ability to provide resource quotas that allows for you to uh, measure and monitor and kind of know what what kind of uh, resources are being used within different namespaces and different mounts, etc. Um, and the ability to kind of build out, um, you know, we, we also have additionally added mount move and namespace API locks that helps with better management. And we're going to continue to innovate on that, right? So there is, if we're set up, um, we're building autopilot similar to what we have with our console helps with um, kind of the upgrades and other things in a more seamless manner, monitoring, we continue to build up on building attribution for our client counts, working on performance, and kind of continuing to build again that uh, innovation that we started with providing resource quotas. The last bucket here is for me to talk about one of the most important things for us. As a company that has enabled our customers to move to the cloud, we are ourselves transitioning our own journey, our product journey into the cloud. And I, talk, I talked to you about HCP Vault being launched last year. We continue to make innovations. We launched a starter SKU focused on smaller projects. And in, earlier this year, we launched a plus SKU, which is focused on enterprises and the, the needs there. The plus SKU now has uh, a performance replication, which is an important aspect. Um, of or a requirement for these large enterprises. But we also now have multi-factor authentication for all of these different SKUs. And again, when we first launched HCP Vault, all we had was five um, auth and secrets engines. And now we support over 40 auth and secrets engines. And that's not all. We're gonna be kind of continuing down this path of improving and, and providing all AWS region support Kind of extend beyond AWS, which is our first cloud, and, and your guess is really good about what the next cloud provider could be, but also working on migration and other value add services. Kind of the, the, the pitch on that value add services is that now because we're hosting HCP Vault, we do have the ability to run and, and provide additional services, which was otherwise harder for us to provide on an on-prem installation. So these are some of the, the, the major kind of improvements that we've been working on on Vault. Obviously not enough to cover in a small talk like today. I urge you to go listen to all of our other talks this at, at HashiConf, as well as go check out our resources on learn.hashicorp.com and vaultproject.io on updates that we have. Uh, again, thank you all so much for your time today, and I wish you have a great HashiConf 2022. Thank you. Thank you.